Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Chicago style Italian beef. The Italian beef has been a highly requested video from you guys out there in YouTube land, so I'm excited to be taking a crack at it today. Now, what we're talking about, if you're not familiar with this sandwich, is a roast of beef that's wet roasted in beef juices, shaved thin, dunked back into those hot juices, and piled on a bun with either sweet or hot peppers. Now, there's stuff to unpack with every step of that process, and that's what we're gonna do today, starting with those beef juices. Now, for the cooking process, you need a big roasting pan, and the idea here is you wanna cook your roast submerged, at least partially submerged, in juices that are collected from cooked roast. So we can't do all of that with the juices that are come out of this roast. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own beef broth in the roasting pan using some beef bones, some different vegetables, and then we're gonna create a stock while that roast is cooking. So we're gonna start by mixing up our seasonings here. We're gonna do equal parts of the Yoder Smokers beef rub and the Cattleman's Grill Italiano. And this is where we're gonna get our seasoning base. Uh, as far as dries go. This is a great combination, nice color, just a little bit of that red paprika in there, but you got a lot of great herbs and spices. We're gonna need this in a couple of spots here today, so let me move this aside. Now before we can start cooking the roast, we've got to roast off our veggies and our beef bones that are going to create the stock. So I've got some marrow bones here, I've got some neck bones, about a pound and a half total. We're gonna create basically a little beef stock in here, so we'll need onions, celery, and carrots. Also got six cloves of garlic that have been crushed. You don't have to worry about peeling them, just crush them. And then a quarter cup of tomato paste. And we just kinda wanna get this stuff coated in the tomato paste. And then we're gonna roast this on the grill for about half an hour just to get things started before we even start the braising process. Just a few more ingredients we wanna add once we've got this all coated. I'm gonna throw in some porcini mushrooms. This is kind of a, a little impromptu, I would say. Uh, not necessarily something you're gonna see in a stock all the time, but a great addition for the umami. Herbs, we've got rosemary, we've got thyme. And then we want a couple tablespoons of whole black peppercorns, just like you would use when you're making a beef stock. So let's take this over to the grill. Today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. We're running it at 425 degrees with hickory pellets. Yeah, before we throw this on the grill, I just about forgot, we wanna add a little bit of seasoning right now as well. So we're gonna do three tablespoons of that seasoning that we mixed up. The rest will actually go onto the roast. So technically indirect heat here. Uh, our fire source comes from the left side, so we're gonna be rotating the pan at times today. This initial process is just about getting a little bit of roast just to deepen the flavors on the meat and on the veggies. So we'll check back in about 20 to 30 minutes. Now the roast of beef that we're using today is the Eye of Round, and this is a prime roast from Creekstone Farms. Uh, it's got a lot of trimming done already. There are some spots where we could do a little bit more, uh, but pretty much anywhere I just see some silver skin that I wanna take off, like that stuff's not fun to chew on, we'll get rid of that. But a little bit of fat on the surface, I don't mind it. It's not gonna hurt anything to have a little bit of a fat layer right around the edge. Now it's this kind of silver skin stuff that I don't want on the outside of the roast because it's super chewy. Now granted, we are gonna slice this pretty thin, so it would just be like one chewy strip around the edge, but it's still a little bit annoying and unpleasant. So now we're gonna go ahead and season it up. We'll hit the surface with a little Worcestershire sauce as our binder. And save the rest of that to throw into the roasting pan. And then we're gonna take our mixture here, Italian beef seasoning and just coat the outside in it. Choose a side that's going to go up and be exposed and give that a little bit more seasoning than the bottom side because the bottom side is going to get the seasoning from the roasting pan, from the juices, and it's just gonna wash off the beef. So you don't have to worry a lot about getting heavy seasoning on the bottom. Kinda all gonna end up in the same place in the end. 
but we are going to have the top side exposed, so we want to make sure that there's some seasoning stuck to it. All right, that can sit there and rest until the veggies are done roasting. All right, we've given our veggies and our beef bones a good bit of time to roast, forming some color, a little car caramelization on those carrots. We're gonna deglaze the bottom of this pan with just a little bit of red wine. Again, a little bit of extra flair here. Doesn't take much, a half cup to a cup, just to loosen up what's stuck to the bottom of the pan. And then once I'm satisfied that we've loosened all the fond from the bottom, we'll go ahead and get our roast in here. So right there on top of everything. And then we need to get our liquid into our pan. So I have some actual drippings, some jus from the last time I did this that I'm gonna use again. Anytime you can save this and throw it in the freezer, you never want to throw away this kind of stuff. That'll be a great starter for us. But that beautiful, thick, velvety stuff, it all started from scratch just from a box of beef stock just like this one last time. So once you get this started, you can keep it going and it just keeps getting better. You're gonna need about two to three quarts of stock. Right now we're a little shy of two. I'll probably put another half in here and we'll just keep an eye on this to try and keep that liquid level up as it's cooking. We'll get our probe in here, down here in the deepest part. We're gonna aim for a pretty rare temperature because this, again, it's gonna get dipped back into the hot liquid before it's served. With well, the beef spin on for just shy of three hours now, we've reached our target internal temperature of 125 degrees. And all this time, that jus has just been bubbling away building big time flavor for this broth that we're gonna be dipping the slices in. So this is ready to come off. We need the beef to chill down so we can slice it thin. So I'm gonna transfer the roast to a wire rack and then we'll strain off our beef stock so we have just nice smooth jus for dipping slices. Now while the roast is chilling down, we want to separate the liquid from the solids so we can heat that liquid back up for dipping our sandwiches and for dipping our meat into. We're taking out some of the really big chunks. Just going to strain off the rest of these veggies. So now we've got this flavor packed jus. And this, honestly, like this is where the beef is gonna get a lot of its flavor. <laughs> that tastes like beef gravy. God dang, that's good. So we're gonna put the jus back on the grill. I've taken the diffuser door out so we can get some direct heat. We're running at 450 degrees now. We're also going to fire off our sweet peppers. So once we've got these peppers kind of blackened all around, that skin's blistered and releasing from the flesh, we can take these off the grill and place them into our zip top bag to steam for the next five to 10 minutes. And then we'll peel the skins off, get rid of the seeds and dice the flesh. But the roast has cooled down and firmed up. It's gonna make it easy for us to get really nice thin slices out of it. You can see we've got a nice pink center here. That's what we get for pulling it at 125, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So we're gonna fire up the slicer. You can try and do this by hand, but honestly, you're just never gonna get it paper thin by hand. So if you got access to a slicer, that's ideal. Otherwise, just do your best with a knife to shave it as thin as you can. All right, peppers have steamed. We should be able to get the skins off fairly easily now. Just gonna cut this guy open. Ideally, the flesh of the pepper should now have, uh, still have a bit of texture to it. Shouldn't be completely softened. But it's definitely softened a bit from the roasting. And now we've got this kind of smoky 
fire roasted flavor worked into it as well. But typically when you're ordering your Italian beef, you're gonna get it with sweet or hot peppers, right? When they say sweet peppers, this is what they mean, bell peppers. You might see green sometimes, you might see red mixed in, that's why we're gonna do a little bit of both. I love the sweetness of a red bell pepper. Green are fine, but that sweetness that comes out of the red when it's fully ripe just makes sense to me. All right, so sweet peppers, there you go. Now when we're talking about hot peppers, this is what we mean, a Chicago style Giardinera, which is a mixture. It's largely serrano peppers, but there's some cauliflower, there's some sport peppers mixed up in here. And it's all soaking in a mixture of vinegar, olive oil, a chili oil. But it's been sitting there for a couple days. But I'll definitely give you guys the recipe for this at the link to the blog in the video description. Now the only thing that we're missing here is the roll. And to be honest with you, where I'm located, I'm never gonna get the right kind of roll unless I wanna buy like 144 of them online and have them shipped here, which I considered. But we're not gonna do that today. If you're in the Chicago area, you're looking for Toronto or Ganella rolls, basically French rolls with Italian names, that's what you want. Uh, unfortunately, we gotta make do with what we've got here. We'll get a sweet Italian roll that'll have to work in its place. We're gonna split those not all the way through. Even got a bolillo, which is of course a Mexican style, probably won't hold up as well to the wet style, which we're gonna get into right now. The gravy is hot, so let's dunk the beef. This is why we want that beef just a little bit pink when it comes off, because it's sitting in this hot, hot jus. It's gonna come right out of there though, and onto the bun. Load it up. Now, if you're doing this wet style, the whole thing's going back in. And this is where it's so key to have a good bun because you gotta be able to keep it together. Now, since we've got them both, I'll add both sweet peppers and our hot peppers. And that thing's ready to go. <laughs> Dripping. What a mess. What a delicious mess. Hold on, guys. Yes. The secret is the jus. Hold on, let me towel off. Look, the beef on its own, it's good. But without that jus that we created, those neck bones and the marrow bones, all those veggies, even the mushrooms, the herbs, all of that stuff comes through in that gravy. And when you give it the dip, it adds all the extra flavor you need. Now, you gotta try the wet style, but it would be great even without it. You can always ladle just a little bit over the top. But what really sets it off on top of all that is that hot pepper. So many flavors going on. You've got your herbs in there as well, that olive oil, that bite from the vinegar, and it's got just a little bit of kick to it as well. The sport peppers are great in there. The serranos bring the heat. There's so many wonderful flavors all existing in the same place. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone that requested this sandwich. I should have done it a long time ago, but I appreciate that you guys are watching, you're getting involved, I wanna hear more of it. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.